Welcome to Real Time, Florida Sportsman. This week we're up in Big Bend, fishing Crystal River. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan Florida Sportsman's regional forms for the best fishing reports, then travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh yeah, <laughs> she's done for now. This week I headed to the spring-fed waters of Crystal River. I teamed up with Big Bend Forum member Justin Whaley and explored everything above water and below. As crazy as this is, little bass and little red. All coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. The trip started with meeting on the docks at the plantation on Crystal River with this week's guest host, Justin Whaley, AKA Angler Bros. You were right about mid-December. It's pretty chilly out first thing in the morning, but we have high hopes leaving the dock. Crystal River is about 10 miles north of Homosassa and it's in what's referred to as the nature's coast and rightfully so. You know, it has natural freshwater springs, you know, and it's known for its scalloping. It's crystal clear springs that a lot of people dive on with manatees, and also it's fishing. All right, here we are, Justin Whaley, AKA Angler Bros in the Big Bend region. Where are we exactly? Oh, we're on Crystal River, up in the Kings Bay area. Kings Bay is right in this region. This is a pretty neat area. I mean, this is, uh, you know, a lot of diversity. You say we're going to start out first thing this morning by targeting what? What's our first target this morning? We're looking for snook first, and then later we'll go for the bass. But we could pick up the bass anywhere in the river because this is all fresh water and salt water. And it's amazing. 42 degrees out. You don't think of snook fishing when it's 42 degrees out. But you have these springs, the water's warm, you're still going to eat. Yeah, we could catch anything today. You know, one of the first spots that Justin wants to fish is a little residential cove or a canal. And typically when you get further up these canal systems, you know, I'm used to dirtier water, but these things are actually fed from natural aquifers and pretty much fresh water. Not only do they hold bass, but they hold snook and redfish. So we're just gonna start out by beating up on these docks, just motoring along, yeah. working the structure. It's funny, you can go to where you go when you're snook fishing, it's structure. Yeah. East coast, west coast, north, south. You're looking for that heavy structure, they love it. So how far are we from the salt water? Well, I would say um, the river has got to be a few miles long. I mean, I wouldn't have an exact length, but I'm sure we're about six to seven miles away from the ocean. And this is just getting fed from a natural spring, so there's just fresh water pouring out of here. That's why those bass yeah, are in here. Yeah, there's pretty much a spring in almost every canal up here. You just got to find them. You know, this is a really rare ecosystem where you can have this fresh water that converges with the salt water of the Gulf. You know, and that's taking place because of these naturally fed springs. You have fresh water pouring out of these springs, which allows the bass to be here, but also because of the proximity to the Gulf and the salt water, you have redfish, snook, and snapper. That's a bass. There you go. That's snook, actually. Oh, a little snook. Yeah, that's snook. See, so they're out in the middle, normally. Yeah, that's the average size for these snook. Oh, man. That's the start to the slam that I wanted. That's the average size? Yeah. Oh, you said you get them 20 pounds also. Yeah, they'll be big in the springs. God. But they school up in these little coves, this size. Great little fish. Yep. I got something. A okay. redfish. <laughs> Talk about some diversity. Little guys. What a cool fisher. Pretty cool. You know, now I'm in the zone. I'm on to the redfish. You know, I'm using a little jig head, a little heavier, getting to the bottom. Justin's fishing it weedless, you know, just a worm hook, but I'm finding them. I'm on the reds. Dude, God, it feels like another red. It feels like a better fish. A little better red. Now that's a nice red. Yeah. yeah, still only about 16 in. God, in the same cove where you're catching bass, and snook and reds. Just bouncing the bottom with that jig, that gulp. I'm sure it's just loaded in there because I put it back in that same hole and caught another one. There's one. Got one now too? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. As crazy as this is. <laughs> That's a fat little guy. A little bass and a little red. Completely fresh water. That's fire using the same exact bait. Five inch jerk shad, gulp jerk shad. 
catching bass and catching reds and snook. Real simple, 30 pound Berkeley fluorocarbon, Berkeley eighth ounce jig head, and just a gulp five inch pearl white jerk shad. And I tell you, everything as you can see eats these jerk shads. So we're staying at the plantation. The goal today is they're gonna cook our catch tonight. So they said, bring them back some food. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this will be the one. Yeah, another little red. Another red, I feel like. Yeah. How big did it have to be on this side? 18. I just keep getting them like 17 wow. and a half. He doesn't want to make it to the dinner table. That one might. Just bouncing the bottom, you know, bottom feeders. They're sitting down there like that. And catch them one after the other. This segment is brought to you by Trocar Hooks. The rules have changed. The world has never seen a hook like this. What I thought was good before is not so good now. The first surgically sharpened fish hook. This is the best ever. In test after test, we have proven that anyone can set this new hook with half the effort of any other hook. That's money. Introducing the Trocar Hook, a weapon for fishermen who aren't just out to catch fish, but are out to win. You know, this area is so beautiful and unique, it's several hours away from my home, but you know, we're used to fishing in more of urban areas, and this place looks like a totally different world, like a different state. You're back in these spring-fed canals, you know, you got these young boys out fishing. You know, this is what life's about. This is the winter low tide, probably. It's winter low? Yeah. I mean, look at the tidal swing. You can see over here the difference in water depth, I and mean, that's four-foot tidal difference. We're on a big moon right now, and the winter tides are a little stronger, obviously. That's a lot of variance there. So we left the canal, headed over to Justin's trout spot, and I'm pretty excited. You know, we just need that one more fish to complete the slam. He says it's almost a guarantee at this spot. New spot. Yeah, hopefully we can pick up a few trout here to finish our slam. A little deeper water. Yeah. And so in the winter time here, they, these trout are sitting in these deep holes, huh? Yeah, they'll come up the rivers and find anywhere to stay warm. Like 19, 20 feet deep right here, and yeah. bouncing these holes. So this gulf, you know, it's so shallow out here. That's why you have those probably those great scallop grounds. Yeah. And we we came up here last year and did a show scalloping. Yeah, it was so neat to see. And also, they have a great tarpon fisher. I know that world record on fly came up from Homosassa. It's pretty wild. Tarpon are usually around the islands and stuff out of Crystal River, but you got. Very shallow water. I mean, if you wanted to go offshore, it's only about a foot every mile until you really get out there. Long you, runs. You could go 20 miles out and you're only being 30 foot of water. So we're working this area pretty hard. You know, catching some little snapper. There's a cormorant that will not leave us alone. But I don't know, this is not the trout spot that he said it's gonna be. So now we're heading out to the Gulf, on the outside as they refer to it. And it pretty much seems just like the inside. It's so shallow, there's these grass flats that extend for actually miles. So we moved out here pretty much at the mouth, right at the Crystal River, the tide changed. Got some water moving in, find these trout out here. Is year round you find them out here? Normally I try to catch them in here around the winter time, about this time of year, because they start moving in for warmer water when we get these cold fronts. And uh, we're about 63 degrees in here versus 58 out there, and the trout don't go as far up river as the reds and snook would. So I figured there would might be a couple in here. Not as tolerant to that fresh water. You know, further up you get this river, the salinity drops and uh, the snook and reds don't mind it, but the trout don't like it. So we're drifting the oyster beds and finally I get the bite that I'm looking for. I get the trout. Yes, it's the trout. Get them coming in. That's, That's a good a... trout, too. Yeah. <laughs> My undersized slam, but the boat got one. Nice. God, he ate that gulp, too, boy. He inhaled it. He's probably almost like it. I got an in short Big Ben slam. Not a slot slam, but undersized slam, all on the same exact bait. That's pretty funny. And not far apart. They love Berkeley's. Little male, he's grunting. 
So we drifted around some more and caught a couple more fish, but now the tide is flowing in good. Justin wants to make the move, continue to head back up river. We're gonna hit that spot where the cormorant was. Tide's changed. Kind of get some, some trout and some reds through here. Yeah, hopefully we can get more fish here than we did this morning. Yeah, they weren't chewing this morning, but maybe they'll chew now. So I don't know why we weren't getting bit before, but all of a sudden now we're getting the bites. That's a red. Red. Yeah, it's, I think it's just what I had was a red. Yeah, that's, the, that's probably exactly what Look at that tail on that thing. Look at the color. It was like my first cast with this new lure. Change colors over? Yeah. We just switched it up. The white wasn't working. This just seems to be the color they want right now. This one Let I it be actually, 18. Let this, it be 18. This would be a keeper red. Yeah, that's a keeper. If it's a red, it's a keeper. Oh, yeah. Taking drag. Yes, nice one. There you go. Oh, my goodness. That is a good one right there. Yeah. Wow. 20 foot of water. <laughs> Redfish. Nice. The funny thing is, you change colors over in two casts, you caught two fish. Two reds. I think I'm switching. Nice red. Oh. That's a bigger slot fish there, you know? That's definitely. It's probably 23. Bigger one of the day. Right on the bottom, you know, feeding that deeper water. Tide came in, we hit this spot earlier today when the tide was falling. Didn't do anything really, just some snapper bites. Came back in here when the tide switched over and started catching these guys. This segment is brought to you by Spider Wire. Nothing gets away. 50 years ago, Penn built the toughest spinning reel the world has ever known. Until now. Introducing the fifth generation of Spinfisher, the Penn Spinfisher V, with a watertight design that keeps saltwater out, a full metal body to withstand heavy loads, Big fish. and the upgraded slammer drag system for twice the drag pressure. The Penn Spinfisher V is a new state-of-the-art weapon from Penn. Let the battle begin. So we have the slam, we've upgraded our redfish. Justin tells me he's got a spot with some bigger snook. We decided to give it a shot. Switched it up again. Looking at the snook spot now, he says. So yep. another little drop off of fishing on the channel edge. Bouncing the gulps on the bottom. You know, I think a snook, I think further south down the coast. You know, I'm, I'm really surprised when you told me you were getting him here and I saw your post that you're catching them up this far. As year round, you can get them? Yeah, pretty much. They stay in this river, they just move back and forth, or they'll stay in the deeper water. It's amazing for as far north as it is. You know, it was in the 40s this morning, 42. But the water was, you know, 20, 30 degrees warmer because of these springs. And I guess that's just the reason why year round they can be here. Yeah. Any other type of situation with that cold of water, cold of wind, you know, air, and the water just wouldn't stay that warm. So this spot Justin takes me to looks so familiar. This is what I know. Heavy structure area, fishing docks for snook. That's a snook. Yep, there it is. Yeah, it's a decent fish right there. Better? Heck yeah. How cool is that? God, this place is so neat. Freezing cold. There it's a little it better one. Look at that heavy structure area. Such a common denominator for these fish. A little school of minnows in there. You ate that uh, chartreuse and new penny. If you ever want to know where to find the snook, heavier the structure, the better. It's crazy. They just love being in there. Holds the bait, safe from porpoises. Oh. Oh, come on out of there. That looks like a red. That's, That's a, a nice snook. snook. There he is. I cast as far back up there as I could get. Wow. He went from bass. Redfish, trout, snook, there's everything up here. Great fishery. 
there's a ton of manatees in here and obviously probably the winter time they're here because it's just constant water temperature you know 72 degrees coming out of these springs they love it that's why the snook are here too look at the manatees right below my snook crazy as that these manatees swam by in the snook ate so it had been a full day we caught plenty of fish we decided to make the short run back to where we were staying the plantation at crystal river is right in the heart of everything it's a great location right on the water we got cleaned up and had a great dinner at their restaurant, West 82 Bar and Grill. Not only does this place have great accommodations, it's extremely boater friendly. It has its own boat ramp, you know, has dockage, and it has its own dive shop. This segment brought to you by Yozuri, fish the best. They are piling on this Yozuri. That's solid right there on the Yozuri, bro. Oh, big fish. Ate the Yozuri. Oh, on the Yozuri top water. Nice. That was beautiful. You get him on that Yozuri. Look at this. That's a monster. There he is. Oh, I got him on the Yozuri. <laughs> <laughs> on a top water plug. Dolphin. Nice. Dolphin on the Yozuri. That's insane. That was so cool. Whether you fish inshore or offshore, fish the best. Fish Yozuri. This week we're in Crystal River. This is a great destination for your family as a vacation. Not only as a hardcore fishing destination, but just as a casual, you know, come snorkel, you know, kick back, have a great time with the family. But one thing you have to be concerned about is the navigation here. This is hard bottom. It's not like a lot of other places with a soft bottom. If you get out of navigational zone, you can end up in some trouble. A couple things that you may want to do coming to a new destination. You know, if you're going to be in town for a week or so, why not go ahead the first day and hire a licensed captain? You know, that can help flatten out the learning curve for you. You can easily, quickly learn the waters and keep yourself out of trouble. Another thing is the use of navigational charts. Be it your Raymarine or a paper chart, the best thing to do is to go over those charts and really get a feel of the water. You can take it to a local dive shop, a local fishing tackle store, and they can help show you areas to stay out of. You know, lastly, what you want to do is probably just take your time. Good use of polarized glasses, trimming your motor up. If you have a jack plate, running your jack plate up and just taking your time getting out to these destinations. Really follow the navigational markers and you can keep yourself out of lots of trouble. Catching as much fish as we did the day before and seeing how much this place has to offer, we decided to switch gears and meet at the dive shop the next morning. Getting fitted for the snorkeling gear. Oh yeah, that's right. We're getting suited up. Going to visit the springs and play with the manatees. Of course, we had to watch our mandatory manatee safety course, get all our gear, and then we headed out in the trike. Don't poke or prod manatees. All right, morning day two. You know, we had such a good time fishing yesterday. We caught plenty of fish. Mm -hmm. We kind of completed our inshore slam. We're gonna mix it up a little bit today. We're gonna to see what all this buzz is about. This whole town goes crazy over this diving on these springs. So we decided just to you know, totally change gears. Got some dive gear from the shop. Go check out the manatees. Yeah, sounds fun. You know, I'm kind of excited. Crystal clear water, snook, tarp in this area in these springs. Our first spring, it's eight in the morning. The place has already <laughs> got some boats set up in it. Yeah, and the manatees are already showing up. Oh yeah. 42 degrees out for some reason. I don't even want to take my jacket off. <laughs> I'm taking my jacket off and putting a wetsuit on. Yeah, I guess. The water is, the water is 70. So the water is almost 30 degrees warmer than the air. So my the transition to wetsuit is going to be the worst part. But once we get in, it should be fine. Yeah. Let's do it. The first spring is out in the middle of Kings Bay. You know, kind of open water. You know, getting the water, I expect it to be a little cleaner, but it's kind of dirty. I swim in, the next thing you know, I'm surrounded by manatees. So now I'm swimming around, and I've taken the safety course, so I know you're not supposed to approach these things to harass them, but the next thing you know, I'm being sexually harassed by a manatee. All right, so one found me, one likes me. I don't want to be aggressive, I don't want to push away, I don't want to upset the manatees, but you know, 10 minutes later, this thing won't let me go. Finally, I said my goodbyes to that man. See, it was time for the breakup. I made my way back to the boat and we decided to head over to another spring. So we're heading up to Three Sisters? Yeah, Three Sisters. And there's three sets of spring 
you gotta swim through this little uh, kind of like a tunnel that goes back in there and then it opens up and there'll be a spring to our right and then there'll be one farther back that's deeper and then there'll be another one to our left and we'll just swim to all of them. The water's a lot clearer. Oh here. man, this water is gin clear in here. Yeah, it's gonna be neat here. Coming into this next spring called Three Sisters, this is what I pictured, this is what I imagined. You know, you could just see crystal clear water just flowing out of this canal system. In all seriousness now, I'm pretty excited. You know, I didn't think I would be, but we pull up into this area and you can just see this little, you know, little slough back where the, where the spring is. We drop the power pole, get the gear on, and I can't wait to get in the water. You know, so you swim back down this creek and you get to this opening where there's these three natural springs and it's so unique. It's the first time I've ever seen something like this. You know, you swim down to the bottom, there's just a small hole down there that's just pouring out warm water. Now, meanwhile, the air temperature's in the 40s, but this is a constant 72 degree of water that's pouring out of this hole. So we're not the only ones that like this area. You know, there's bass in there, you know, there's shell crackers, there's brim, there's snapper, and of course, there's lots of manatees. I'll tell you, that was something neat to see. Yeah. Between the bass and the snapper and the crystal clear water, those manatee. You know, and the fishing here yesterday with the snook, the trout, the reds, and even the bass as well. I mean, it has that to offer, it has this diving, these springs, the scalloping in the summertime. I can see why they call this place the Nature's Coast. Yeah, all year long there's something to do here. It's a great destination. A lot of stuff to see, a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, it's definitely a great place. You know, this isn't the first trip to this area. Actually, last year we took a trip up here and did the scalloping. In the summertime, this place gets packed with people that do this. And scalloping is really what this area is known for. They have these vast grass flats that just extend for miles out into the Gulf. And in the summertime, people just love to come and chase after these things. Justin Whaley, AKA Angler Bros from the Big Bend region of the Florida Sportsman Forum, showed me that Crystal River has a lot to offer. Not only for hardcore fishing, but for a great family getaway as well. Be it for the natural springs and diving with manatees or chasing scallops out in the Gulf, this nature coast is truly a unique location. If it wasn't for Justin's post, I wouldn't have chose him to fish with. I need your reports to continue, because I may fish with you next on Real Time, Florida Sportsman. What the heck? Nice. It's another red. Yep, it's a red. Gee, you land right on top of him or what? This thing wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah, they follow you around too. <laughs> That's funny kick to get away from him. He was holding on to me with the flippers around my leg. Yeah, very gentle. That's pretty wild. First time for that.